Hello and welcome to the Coliseum of Cryptids Learn to Play series. Here we hope to teach the wonderful game of Menazi to beginner players as well as provide a resource that can be referenced in the future if you ever have questions about Metazoo gameplay. So what is Metazoo? Well, Metazoo brings cryptids such as Bigfoot, Mothman, Chessie, and many others into a turn-based strategy card game that allows you to utilize those cryptids and some magic to defeat your opponents. The goal of the game is to bring your opponent's life points from 1,000 down to zero before they are able to do the same to you. One of the best parts about Metazoo, in our opinion, is the idea of the game breaking the fourth wall. This means that your surroundings matter to how the game will be played out. Things like where you're currently located, what you're wearing, the things you say, as well as just having certain items close by. These fourth wall effects can drastically change how a certain card is played, and also provide a very entertaining experience for everyone. While playing Metazoo, you will continuously hear a specific set of terms throughout the game. So we're going to go through some of the important ones to note when you're just starting out. The first term you may hear is caster. A caster in Metazoo refers to you and all players in the game. Each player in the game is considered a caster. The entire gameplay area that you and the other casters are playing in is considered the battleground. Inside of the battleground, you will have the arena, and this is where each caster will play their cards. Each caster will have a spell book in the battleground, and this is your deck of cards. The cards inside of your spell book are considered pages, and you must have a minimum of 40 pages in your spell book. Now as the game progresses, you will draw pages from your spell book. This game mechanic is known as bookmarking a page. You will keep these pages in a hand that you will want to keep private from the other casters. That hand is considered your chapter. So what will these pages in your chapter consist of? Well, there are six possible types of pages available currently. The first is known as Aura. These pages are your resources. They will be used to bring other pages into the arena throughout the game. Next, we have Beasties. These are the cryptids that you will use to attack opposing casters and their side of the arena, as well as perform powers that a beastie may have on the page. Beasties are considered permanent pages and stay in the arena until another page acts upon it that may remove that beastie from the arena. We then have artifacts. Artifacts are also considered permanent pages, but do not have attacks like beasties. They either provide an effect of some kind, or contain a power that can be used when the page allows it. We will dig deeper into attacks, effects, and powers at a later time, so don't worry too much about understanding them just yet. In addition, there are spells and potions. Both of these card types provide a one-time effect and are usually discarded right after the effect resolves. Last but not least, we have Terra Pages. Terra Pages are also considered permanent pages, and are used by players to activate certain fourth wall effects in the arena. Now each one of these pages has an aura type. At the moment, there are currently 12 different aura types that a page can be. The available aura types are Water, Flame, Forest, Frost, Lightning, Earth, Cosmic, Dark, Light, Spirit, Neutral, and Special Aura. We'll dig deeper into aura types and how they affect each page at a later time. Now that we know about the different types of pages and the aura types that they can be, let's go over how you will bring these pages into the arena. Pages will primarily be played from your chapter. The act of bringing a page from your chapter into the arena is known as contracting the page. When a page is contracted, it enters the arena fatigued, which means it comes in at a 90 degree angle. Now all pages come into the arena fatigued except for aura, unless there's an arena effect, the text on the page, or another page's card text states otherwise. So now you know the basics. Let's now dig into how we can get a new game started. The first thing you will want to do is get some paper ready to keep track of your life points. Or you can use a very handy mobile app developed by Caster Society that will help you and the other casters easily keep track of your life points. We then need to determine who goes first. This is usually done by one player flipping a coin and another predicting the outcome. If the caster predicts correctly, they will get to choose whether they would like to go first or second. Another approach that is quite common is grabbing either one or two dice and allowing each player to roll. Whoever has the higher number from their roll will then get to choose their turn position. Once we know who will be going first, you're going to want to make sure your spellbook is nice and shuffled. It's usually common courtesy to offer your spellbook to the opponent to perform a little shuffling of their own or to cut the spellbook. After both spellbooks are properly shuffled, each caster will bookmark the top seven pages from their spellbook. At this point, you have a choice to make. 
If you like your chapter, you let your opponent know that you will be keeping it and you are ready to start the game. If you don't, you will announce to your opponent that you are going to mulligan. The act of mulliganing pertains to taking the chapter you just bookmarked and shuffling it back into your spellbook. You then will bookmark n minus 1 pages, where n is the number of pages bookmarked before the mulligan. For example, if you do not like your initial chapter of 7 pages, you can mulligan, and then bookmark 6 pages for your next chapter. If you don't like your new chapter of 6 pages, you may mulligan again, but you will only get to bookmark 5 pages this time. This process can continue until you are no longer able to bookmark any pages into your chapter. Once you and the opposing caster both have chapters that you are willing to play, the player who decided to go first will begin their turn, and the adventure into Metazoo will finally begin. In the next video, we will explore what your turn in Metazoo will look like. If you're curious and want to dive deeper into the rules of Metazoo, we highly suggest you go to metazoogames.com and click on the Gameplay tab in the header to access the official gameplay resources provided by Metazoo. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.